The Xerthian Empire spans over a thousand star systems, filled with brave warriors, ready to defend their people at a moment's notice. When we first encountered the humans 50 cycles ago, we saw a race barely capable of reaching their nearest planets. They posed no threat to our mighty fleets, armed with the most advanced weapons our scientists could conceive. How wrong we were! Despite our efforts to conquer the humans and add their worlds to our empire, they resisted us at every turn. Their technology advanced at an unbelievable pace, fueled by desperation and determination. Within a few short cycles, their weapons matched our own. Their soldiers, though lacking our warrior ethos, fought with a tenacity we did not think possible. After two decades of brutal warfare light years from their homeworld, we finally breached the defenses of Earth itself. Yet even then, facing utter annihilation, the humans would not surrender. City by city, we fought for control of their planet, their weapons devastated our invasion forces, until we commanded the skies and seas, but held little territory on the surface. The long war exhausted our economy and drained the resolve of our people. With Earth unconquered and human counterattacks threatening our core worlds, we sued for peace. The terms were humiliating. We relinquished all claims on human space and promised harsh retribution for any Xertherians who attacked them. As our once proud warriors returned home, we licked our wounds and tried to rebuild. In the cycles after the war, the humans expanded rapidly while we focused inward. Their technology continued to advance, and they colonized world after world. Though we had numeric superiority, the humans' tenacity and rapidly improving technology kept an uneasy pace. We prepared for the day they would seek revenge for our invasion. Yet, strangely, that day never came. As we observed the humans, we noticed their culture changing in unexpected ways. With existential threats receding, their art and music flourished. Their ruthless business rivalry shifted to cooperation and trade. Leaders spoke not of military glory, but of diplomacy, compassion, and human rights. Their vessels, which once bristled with weapons, now served scientific and exploratory aims. We began to realize that, though humanity could be utterly merciless when defending their homes, they harbored no burning desire for revenge or conquest as we did. They forgave old grievances to focus on building a better future for their people. When they did turn their attention outward, it was in a spirit of curiosity and discovery rather than domination. Their warriors became explorers, charting the endless wonders of space. As the cycles passed, we watched and studied the humans closely. Their culture fascinated our scholars, who marveled at how they could be simultaneously so brutal in war yet so innovative and peaceful without an external threat. When we observed their forms of entertainment, we realized that their strength came not just from technology or numbers, but from wildly creative minds unhindered by tradition. Their scientists sought knowledge for its own sake, rather than just military applications. Their engineers built wonders not solely to display might, but to improve lives. Their citizens vigorously debated every idea and tradition, tore them down, then rebuilt them better. We also noted how humans cooperated across borders that would divide Xertherians. Humanity had no single government. They organized themselves into squabbling nations and languages. Yet when facing a common threat like ours, they set aside their differences with a solidarity we could not match. Their networks of alliances, trade partnerships, and communications made them a far more cohesive force than our unified empire. Eventually, we could deny the truth no longer. We utterly lost the war to humanity, not because they overwhelmed us with force, but because their society was more innovative, resilient, and unified than ours, their technology advanced more quickly because they rewarded new ideas instead of tradition. Their soldiers fought harder because they defended their homes instead of seeking glory. And they rebuilt faster because they forgave the past to create a better future. With this realization, our leaders saw only one path forward. If we could not defeat the humans through force, we must learn from them. We must study their culture, understand their strengths, and appropriate them for the Xertherian people. Our scientists began collaborative research projects with human counterparts, comparing notes on fields from physics to psychology. Our engineers exchanged designs for advanced computers and habitats and spacecraft. Our doctors learned revolutionary medical techniques that healed previously untreatable injuries and ailments. Philosophers and writers worked with human peers to bring groundbreaking new concepts and art to our people. Some hardliners decried this philosophical capitulation, claiming it would erode the foundations of Xertherian society. But our leaders held firm. Without change, we would never surpass 
or even match humanity's capabilities. We could no longer afford to stand on tradition and military might alone. Our people must learn to think different, to not just follow orders but question and create. Innovation must be valued over protocol. Cooperation must be incentivized over hoarding secrets and resources. It was not easy. Long ingrained instincts do not disappear overnight and often came into conflict with the new openness. But over time, we made undeniable progress. The collaborative research boosted our productivity enormously. Engineers started their own firms instead of seeking government sponsors. Writers and artists nurtured radical new styles instead of rehashing old propaganda themes. Citizens debated policies and called for reforms unthinkable. Just a few cycles before, the cultural change rippled outwards through our whole civilization, not imposed from above, but emerging from our people's daily interactions with humans. We may have lost worlds to the humans, but we gained the seeds of a brighter future. In time, cultural exchange begat trade, which begat diplomatic partnership. Humans and Xertherians learned each other's languages and customs. Students attended alien universities, seeking knowledge unique to each culture. Merchants realized vast profits from commerce and explored opening branch offices on each other's worlds. Governments carefully negotiated treaties delineating borders, navigation lanes, and protocols for interaction. There were misunderstandings and conflicts, but through persistence and good faith from both sides, they were resolved peacefully. On the 10th anniversary of our humiliating surrender, we invited the human diplomatic delegation to our homeworld in a gesture of reconciliation. As they toured our capital and mingled with crowds of locals, for the first time, no one mentioned the war. There was no more bitterness at defeat, no discussed plans for vengeance. There was only celebration of how far we had come together. Our cultures were blending in beautiful and unexpected ways, producing new art and technology and ways of thinking that neither could achieve alone. From the trauma of war understanding and community was blossoming. When I reflect upon my encounters with humans, I think of General Torres, who led the expeditionary force that penetrated our capital's defenses. It cost him his limbs and an eye, but he succeeded where so many others had failed. In the final years of the war, his face adorned propaganda posters everywhere, depicting him as a monster come to devour Zertherian babies. Yet when the war ended, General Torres became one of the strongest voices for reconciliation and cultural exchange. He gave well-attended lectures about human philosophy and ethics to packed auditoriums on our world. He convinced human companies to trust Zertherian partners and invest capital with us. In one memorable night, in front of millions watching on the hypernet, he performed a traditional four-armed Zertherian dance in a custom-made robotic suit, a dance meant to convey trust and devotion. If General Torres could forgive the horrors of war to embrace friendship, how could any of us do less? Thanks to his courage and that of so many others, enemies became partners, then friends. The road was long and winding, but ultimately humans and Zertherians walked it together, and now we are all richer for it.